Hello, everyone. This is Hondo Carpenter. I'm the host of the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, as well as your Sports Illustrated beat writer covering the Las Vegas Raiders. Very glad to have my dear friend Matt Halatic on with us again today. Before we get going, I apologize for the uh, surroundings. I'm usually not in a shirt and tie and all dressed up, but uh, tonight's my brother's, uh, I mean, excuse me, today is my brother's funeral. And so I'm I'm down here just to for the funeral in the wake last night, and then I'm going back to cover the draft. So we're not going to miss a beat covering the draft for you. Thank you all for being with us, Matt. It's draft week. It sure seems like the season ended just yesterday, but this is Christmas for football fans, isn't it? It is. And first, I just want to say, you know, I wish the best for you and your family. I know it's a really tough time. I appreciate you being on with the, with the Raider, Raider faithful still. I don't want to get you all choked, too choked up. I just had to drop that in there now. and I'll be uh, praying and thinking of you guys. Um, looking ahead to, to Thursday and then the weekend, this is like, you know, I feel like it's the lead up. The three-month draft season is basically like Lent. Um, not Lent. Um, Advent, excuse me, Advent. And uh, I got my Catholic uh, things mixed, messed up there. It's like Advent. And then, you know, this is coming up. We've got Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day on Thursday. And, um, you know, I, I can't wait. I think this is one of the most fun days of the year. Personally, with me, I know Thursday gets all the hype. Understandably, it's the first round, but one of my favorite days is Friday. I love the second and third round on Friday night. I think that's where you find a lot of your best contributors and your your you know your glue guys uh, on your team. So I can't wait. I was talking to a head coach yesterday uh, who got a hold of me on a different issue, but he was talking about the draft that day one gets a lot of publicity, and you can certainly get a rudder for your franchise, but championships are won on day two and three. To me, I know the it's not as big a names. People don't know everyone like they do in the first round or even the second day, but I love that third day. I, I just, I enjoy the draft process. Don't you? You do. And I mean, listen, everybody hopes going into that third day that their team drafts and unearths all these steals. And, you know, a lot of times it may not even, play out that way but if you could find one legit starter on day three or one a couple one. of guys that can fill roles either you know uh, defensive sub substitutes or you know guys that could become trusted reserve old linemen your sixth and seventh linemen um special teamers guys that contribute if you could find that on day three part of that is the backbone of you know of, of any good team if you look at you know, the teams that have been playing for championships recently uh, around the league, the Chiefs and, and the Eagles and the Niners, you know, how many of those teams, obviously, yes, they have the stars. There's no doubt about it. There's Patrick Mahomes. There's, you know, Jalen Hurts. There's Fred Warner, who was even a day two pick for, for the Niners. But they those teams draft well on day three. They had multiple contributing players from day three. So I think that's where – separates the cream of the crop the champions are made you know on day three i agree with you so matt i want to you know you cover the nfl macroly meaning from a very high advantage of all 32 teams i cover it microly uh with the raider perspective but i have a lot of friends around the league i'm hearing a lot so i'm going to ask you this when all is said and done will the bears the commanders and the Patriots all keep their pick and draft quarterbacks. It's funny because I feel like the more you hear leaked out there that the Patriots are listening to offers, but they haven't been impressed by anything and things like that. To me, that's almost entice them in saying, um, trying to entice the team. Hey, come give us something, you know, it, it, you know, we might, if you really give something great, a godfather type offer, we might take it. Um, I would say without a question, Caleb Williams to the Bears at one, and the commanders will keep that second pick. Um, Jaden Daniels still seems like the likely option. It could be Drake May, but I think they're going to take a quarterback too. So those two are, are locked in, I think, with staying put. I still mm -hmm. think the odds favor 
New England staying at three, but I think the fact that you're starting to see this buzz, even if it's just reports that they're not impressed with what they've received so far, that tells me that they're looking for somebody, whether it's the Vikings, whether it's the Broncos, the Giants, whomever, to up the ante and go get that third pick for a quarterback. So I think the odds are slightly better they keep it, but I think there's a chance that they – definitely seems to be a chance that they're angling toward the trade. They just want to get what they want. Yeah, I think the odds are completely solid that all three of those teams stay there. I've said for weeks what I'm hearing around the league is that what they want is somebody to make a dumb offer. And in today's modern NFL, there's always somebody who might, but I don't I don't think it's going to be there. Right, I'm going to ask you a couple other questions. Let's talk about quarterbacks in the first round. I've seen some people think as many will as seven will go. I don't think there's any chance that seven goes. I, I don't think there's any chance in talking to NFL people. The people I trust who are good drafters have two guys at the minimum, some of them three in the first round. How many quarterbacks will go in the first round if you had to pick today? This is Wednesday. We're literally a day away. How many quarterbacks do you think go in the first round? I think that we are going to get at least four. And I think a fifth would not surprise me at all. I think six, seven is not going to happen. Six, I think, might be pushing it. But I think the big four that you're hearing about, um, Caleb Williams and Daniels and Drake May and J.J. McCarthy will all be off the board at some point. And I think a fifth, whether it's a Michael Penix Jr., a Bo Nix, or somebody like that could get their way, sneak their way in there. Um, I think anything beyond that might be a little bit tough. Now, I predicted earlier in the year, I think it was back the last week of January, maybe it was the week after the Super Bowl, somewhere in that window, that the record for offensive linemen in the first round is five. And I said that I had heard – and I agreed with it, so my, it was my prediction as well, that there could be as many as 10 offensive linemen in the first round. You and I have discussed that. I'm not running from it. But in talking to someone on Monday in the league who originally shared that thought with me, they said they think there's going to be a lot of stupid drafting. And they go, if that number doesn't hit 10, I'm happy. I said, why are you happy? Because that means more guys are falling into the second round and who are first round level talents. He told me he thinks this is going to be a, a, a definitive draft. And I explained, asked him to explain what he meant by that. He goes, this is one of those drafts that 20 years from now we're going to look back on as a definitive draft. I thought that was fascinating. He said, I think we're going to see a lot of teams made from this draft. And I think we're going to see a lot of people get fired from this draft. And he goes, it's going to be definitive. He goes, but I think there is going to be huge wealth in this draft found second, third, fourth, fifth round because of bad drafters. What do you think of that? I thought that was fascinating. Well, getting to the definitive part, I think it's certainly possible because when you have a draft with, you know, you have four quarterbacks, to, people talking about possibly four quarterbacks going in the top four picks or six picks or whatever, those guys are linked forever. And they how they perform and how those teams perform is going to be closely linked and followed for a long time. Um, and so I, I can see that too. And I think that going – excuse me, going back to the talent falling, there is a lot of offensive line talent in this this draft, um, whether it's Joe Olu Fashanu, uh, Talese Fuaga, J.C. Latham. Uh, I'm just naming, you know, those are just four guys off the top of my head that are first rounders, and there's a, a lot more. There's also guys that could be sneaking their way up into the first round conversation um, when all is said and done. So I think that I I agree. I kind of feel like there will be a run on a, a run on talent in the second round, maybe that you might not expect to be there because 
you know, some things went kind of haywire in the first round. I, I could see it happening like that. I think it's the spots, the positions in the draft that are deep are really deep. Receiver, offensive line, excellent, excellent draft. You know, on the opposite Corner. end of the spectrum, corners, I, yes, of course, corner, receiver. I, was, I knew I was trying to think of third corner, receiver, offensive line, three deepest positions. On the opposite end of the spectrum, tight end, running back, uh, you don't really see a lot of them drafted early to begin with, but linebackers not, not a bunch of them either. There's not a lot of linebackers not not great. Quarterback has that group at the top, um, and then you, you, you we'll see what happens after that. But I think that it's going to be you know very interesting to see what players fall to late first round or early second round, uh, and if it entices teams to maybe move up and, and get them. Now, Matt, I had an NFL executive. Uh, say something to me very fascinating. Uh, yes, um, I think it was Monday. The, the gentleman I just mentioned a minute ago that talked about it being a definitive draft. He's been around a long time. He told me that he has never seen the NFL have such weak drafters. I thought that was fascinating. He just said to me, I I, I think there is a lot of people out there that um, – are risk takers that um, are going to make some really bad risks and get fired. He goes, you always see everything with the NFL working as a pendulum. He goes, but I have never seen the NFL where in my opinion, this was not Hondo. This was an executive where there's been as many bad drafters. I found that fascinating. How about you? That is a, you know, that's a bold take because I mean, we don't, you know, not saying who this guy is or, whatnot but th that's saying something about your competition or the guy your constituents where you feel that way and i'll um, tell you who it is when we're off air but. sure sure of course i mean to me it, it will be it'll be interesting because if you look at the top of the draft let's, let's just go there i think ryan Poles has made some pretty good moves in trying to rebuild the bears but now he's got a hit on the quarterback caleb williams has got to be that guy you move to the commanders Brand new GM. Adam Peters learned under John Lynch, has worked for a successful franchise, but he's never been in the big chair. Uh, go to uh, New England, Elliot Wolf, now the man in charge up there. You know, what What does he do? Um, you go down, you look at the Cardinals at four, traditionally not a team that, that does pretty does very well in, in a draft. At five, Jim Harbaugh, has been a winner everywhere, but he hasn't been in the NFL in about a decade. So what does he do? Joe Shane, this is, I think, a definitive draft for him at six with the Giants. He's got to knock it big. Um, and you go down the line, there's there's teams that are have newer GMs or, or regime change that they are a little bit of a wild card, but you're not sure exactly what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating to me. So, Matt, I'm going to ask you, in 10 years, who's going to be the best player out of this draft? I am going to say. I'm putting you on the spot. It is, because that's tough, because there's a couple of different options. There's a couple of different directions I could go. I just think it's tough. For, here's the thing. I think Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in draft, but I have to admit, I haven't studied some of the guys totally in depth and that's such a tough position to evaluate. I don't have a strong conviction on who's going to be the next best there. So I'm going to say it's a little safe. I'm going to go with, I think it's going to be one of the two top receivers. I think it's either going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik neighbors. Who's going to be the biggest bust? Oh, Uh, it's, uh, it's, I, w I would, I, again, I look at the quarterbacks. When I look at the quarterbacks, I the guy that surprised me with how high people are talking about drafting him is J.J. McCarthy. But he is a guy who might show out more in the NFL when you see you get, he gets a chance to work with an NFL system, when he has more put on his plate as opposed to in Michigan where he was – 
But I, I, I know he worked the NFL system at Michigan, NFL style system. But I mean, actually in the NFL, when he, you know, he gets more put on his plate as opposed to a Michigan where they were able to dominate teams. Um, so I think the biggest bust is going to be either Jaden Daniels or Drake May, one of those two guys. I think Caleb Williams is going to pan out. I think Jaden Daniels and Drake May have immense talent. I think one of them is going to pan out. I think the other one's going to end up being the biggest bust of the, the group. All right. Raiders, <clears throat> do they roll the dice? Do you think that they stay put? Do you? What do you think? What is your big, bold prediction for the silver and black? I, Right now, I think they stay put, and I think the best move would be to take an offensive line. Felice Fawaga. Yeah. If he's there, run up there with the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talise Fawaga is an absolute dog. Just an absolute dog dog of a player that's the kind of guy you want and you want it a bad way all right last question from me you and i'm a lot older than you but um you're still not young um i remember when you would sit there with a newspaper and read the newspaper to see who your team selected then i remember when it you know espn made it into a production and then it just has continued to grow. I remember what you and I were doing the radio, we're doing this show years ago when NFL Network started. And you and I had a long discussion. Is there enough content? Now, the way the NFL stretches out playoffs and Super Bowl, then stretches out free agency, stretches out the combine, stretches out the draft. Then as soon as the draft's over, here's the schedule. Then it's OTAs and minicamp. I have a lot of issues with Roger Goodell. I am not a Roger Goodell fan. But if he has done anything right, and there's a lot he has done right, it is making the NFL the only pro sport in America that's 12 months. Your thoughts on that? I would agree. And I think that he he's really capitalized on sort of just the 24-7 nature of media and the 24-7 nature of the world we're in. You know, we're immersed in everything constantly because of smartphones, because of the internet, because of television and everything. Um, and I think that there's no signs of stopping that. The NFL is – it's the king sport uh, in America. It's been that for a while. Uh, it's been that even before Goodell took over. But I think what he's been able to do is as there's been more innovation technologically and there's been more, you know, advancements on that end of the, end of the spectrum, he's been able to hitch the NFL to it so that there's just constantly NFL topics to talk about, constantly something to anticipate. You know, if you go through every month of the year, there's something to talk about or something to anticipate in the NFL because it goes from, like you said, you got February is the Super Bowl. And then by the end of the February, you have the combine and March is free agency. And you have trades and free agency. And then all those wild draft seasons going on. And then the draft is all April. Now you move to May and you'll get some scheduling stuff. And then there's a not a not even a lull, but a slight. You know, it's it's maybe a little bit calmer in June with OTAs and stuff like that. But you still have those things going on. And then once you get into July, you have to count down to training camp, and training camps here is the season. So there's no off season. I don't see that changing. No, well, I don't either. He is the great Matt Halatic. I want to just remind everybody. So tomorrow is Thursday draft day. I'll have one final. Uh, podcast pre-draft in the morning and then for those of you who may remember we started the podcast last year at the draft each night after the draft from the Raiders headquarters I'll be doing a pod so when the draft is over and we've talked to the people that have been picked and I've written stories and then had a chance to talk with Tom Telesco then I'll do a podcast breaking down everything that day so the one I do Thursday night, depending on when it's over, it could not, it may go up Friday morning early, like 
because I don't leave the building till I'm done. That's the one that will stay through Saturday, through Friday. And then Friday night after the draft, I'll have another one that'll go up. And again, the same on Saturday afterwards, and then back to the normal schedule on Sunday. So we got a lot of stuff coming up, a ton of coverage coming up for you. Matt, tell everybody your X handle. Sure. You can find me at, at Matt Halatic 919, M A T T H L A D I K 919. And I'll be on all draft night giving out my thoughts, giving out my analysis. It'll be a fun time. So come find me. And then you can follow me when you go to at Hondo SR on IG. And you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, when you go to at Hondo Carpenter. And remember, go to si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders for all of our great articles. We'll see you all tomorrow.